This video is a sack full of mouse traps. You have been warned. Whatever your game is, I'll play it. We have to assume that there's no one we can trust. There is one man. Welcome to Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. They're nearby, they're coming, and at least in the latest exoplanet news flashes, hot off the cyber presses, they're hot. We're talking about red dwarf stars, those salt of the galaxy stars that litter the Milky Way. They're everywhere. Of course, red dwarfs are big news as possible hosts for light bearing planets. Message coming through. Where is the best place to search for life beyond the solar system? Red dwarf stars surround us. Red dwarf stars have us surrounded. They are also of interest because red dwarf stars are often orbited by planets. These worlds have sizes and temperatures similar to those of Venus and the Earth. Some data suggest that 40% of red dwarfs have super Earth type planets orbiting in a habitable zone where liquid water is possible. If this is true, then they are good candidates for supporting life. What's the matter? Something suspicious. They are the only places where life could be detected on an Earth-sized exoplanet using our current technology. I don't feel right about this at all. A quick glance around the room is proof that times have changed. Ladies and gentlemen, I used to have a saying at Thor News. Red dwarf stars are everywhere. And then I got all hyper-focused on weather for like good two or three years. And my space coverage slacked off a little. But now that I'm trying to rebalance it out, I have to update my old catchphrase to Red Dwarf Stars are everywhere. And apparently, they all have super Earths that possibly are filled with aliens that could be monitoring us now. Asterisk. Asterisks? Yeah, go ahead and put asterisks all around that statement. And it just rolls right off the tongue. Feel free to use it if you want. Yeah, man. I knew Red Dwarf Stars were everywhere. I just didn't realize they were all so close. So habitated. Possibly and in every nook and cranny of our star field, our neighborhood star field. We're talking Proxima Centauri, Red Dwarf Star. Bernard Star, Red Dwarf Star. Trep 7, Red Dwarf Star. They are everywhere. And we have the technology to detect life upon them at this exact minute. And I hate to break it to you, bro. Your government don't always tell you everything. I'm breaking it to you too, ma'am. You see that? It's a brand new Thor News Episode Zero. Dialing it back, just to let you guys know, red dwarf stars are everywhere, and we are going to be talking about them even more. And it seems like a lot of solar systems have a yellow sun like ours, a bigger reddish or orangish star, and then a little red dwarf. What if our trinary system is like that? Questions to ponder on a romantic Saturday night. You and I are here together. And if hearing about red dwarfs gets you excited, and you want to hear more about them, you can always vote for red dwarf stars with the donation in my PayPal link below. Yeah, this is exciting science. Read between the lines. Well, a lot of you are busy screaming at NASA all the time, 24-7. Even though I gotta remind you, it's like Hogwarts. You got multiple divisions, and it depends on which sector of the oil, pharmaceutical pills, and war Voldemort establishment is running shit. So, if you were reading between the lines, let's say Red Dwarf Stars and Brown Dwarf Giants. Red Dwarf Stars, Brown Dwarf Giants. Barbecue, barbecue, mermaids and cakes. Barbecue, barbecue, mermaids and cakes. Exciting. And one night, I was out at the ranch. And it looked like the entire firmament peeled back. And there were a million little red stars. A lot closer than I thought they would be. That moment is neither here nor there, but it has stayed with me forever. Who knows what's out in outer space? It's not like the space agency of the world are in a rush to put us on a party bus so we can go explore them for ourselves. Oh no. He was talking about Mars, Mars. Do they even know there are other planets in the solar system? All this shit is like single digit light years away. And remember, humans measuring light as like an ant measuring miles. Just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But then it's 2018. So yeah, go ahead and bookmark this as a big subject for 2019. Yeah, that's right. I'm at it's time. All right, so let's learn some more about the main sequencing and stellar formation. Because stars are interesting, though complicated, powerful fragile at the same time extremely unique even though there are millions like them in the universe and there's life all around them and they have magnetic fields sometimes auroras oh and these red dwarf stars are super solar flary with high variability in their activity or whatever we can estimate how big the flare on DGCBN was with respect to the solar scale it would have been an x 100,000 
So this is several orders of magnitude larger than the biggest solar flare we've ever seen. The universe still holds many secrets. The big news is that around a very nearby cold small star, we found seven rocky Earth-sized planets, all of which could potentially have liquid water. They may be the best targets so far found in the hunt for life elsewhere in the universe. Sedna's orbit is legendary. I'm just asking, hey, what are the chances? Sedna's a red dwarf star. Sedna's the missing link to a whole lot of shit. And there I was, thinking about outer space with a giant smile on my face. And I didn't have a lot of answers. Unfortunately for you, I'll have his question. Wait, but I got stuff I gotta point out that I think you should know about. I'm trying to return to normal. I don't know if you know this, Thor news is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool.